How's it going guys? It's me again. I was at the ISTA this weekend and uh, far be it from the kind of boring place I imagined with all these stuffy teachers hanging around, it was actually quite exciting because they had some pretty good speakers there. One of which was Professor Jim al -Kahili. Professor al -Kahili gave a very interesting lecture on some pretty mind-blowing stuff, quantum theory, uh, where he poses the question, is life quantum mechanical? I managed to get hold of him after the conference. I was pretty nervous because he's a pretty well-known guy, um, professor of theoretical physics. Here's what he has to say. In chemistry, as we accept it, we have enzymes and catalysts. Um, if you take your quantum mechanics into its thought, should we rethink uh, the workings of enzymes and catalysts? I, I don't think it's a case of rethinking completely. I mean, biochemists have known for many years that that's what enzymes do. They are the catalysts of chemical reactions in, inside living organisms. Yeah. What is actually not that new, but it's, it's still not very well known, that the way enzymes carry out this catalysis is partly, we now believe, thanks to quantum mechanics. It was always thought that they, they, you know, they will transfer electrons, say, from one atom to the other, and, and biochemists get very deep into the complexity of how those chemical processes take place. What we're now discovering is that part of the story is thanks to quantum mechanics. So I guess there is something of a rethink that we have to now incorporate quantum mechanics, which until now uh, has thought to have been completely irrelevant in biology. It looks like catalysts have. Nature has discovered the tricks of quantum mechanics yeah. to make enzyme catalysis much more efficient than, than we would have thought uh, previously. Um, could you give me an example of how uh, quantum mechanics applies to biology or uh, to life sciences? Most of biology doesn't need quantum mechanics. I mean, that I think we have to say that because we've understood so much about the, the biochemistry of living cells without any need for quantum mechanics. But then we're now discovering particular mechanisms within the cell that seem to work much better thanks to quantum mechanics. So the way enzymes, for instance, transfer electrons and even protons from one place to another is through the process of quantum tunneling, which physicists and chemists are familiar with, but has not been seen before in biology. Uh, similarly, the way um, energy is transferred within the cell, for instance in photosynthesis, it looks like the way that energy is moved so efficiently, the way plants can so efficiently turn sunlight into chemical energy, yeah, yeah. is thanks to some of the weirder aspects of quantum mechanics, what we call quantum coherence, or quantum superposition. It, the energy follows all paths simultaneously, and that way it gets from one place to another much more quickly than it could without quantum mechanics. So that's, that's a very exciting development. Yeah, is that also a new development, or has it been uh, happening for a while? Has it been observed for a while? It's been observed for longer than we might think. Quantum biology is only now starting to be talked about, and people are starting to get excited about it. But the, 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 the biochemists that have been looking at this, I think have known about it since the 1980s. So we're talking about a yeah, few decades, it's just, it's, it's just not made it out into the wider community of scientists until the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. And one, one strange question, if quantum mechanics, you, you're talking about um, instant communication and maybe breaking through barriers or walls, um, does this not break some of the laws of physics? Um, well, no, uh, because what's happening is, is quantum mechanics plays a role in biology. It's not doing anything any weirder than physicists and chemists are used to in their labs. So we know, we, we, we can do lots of experiments to show how quantum particles can instantaneously communicate with each other. It's what's called quantum entanglement, and there, there are lots of experiments to show how that happens. But it's tended to be confined to the, the sterile environment of a physics lab, close to absolute zero temperature, and within a vacuum. Because quantum mechanics, the weirder aspects, dissipate very quickly when, when there's high temperatures, energy yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So there's nothing that breaks the laws of physics and chemistry quantum mechanics, it's just that we're now having to rethink where it's applicable and it looks like it's also going on inside living cells. Okay, and what would be, let's say, the, 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 the kind of meeting point of a quantum world uh, versus the real world as we know it now? There are some different kind of rules that apply, 
That's right. Down at the, the, the quantum level, the, the rules of um, classical physics, Newtonian physics, yeah. completely break down. But there isn't a sharp divide between the macroscopic classical world and the microscopic quantum world. It's a, it's a gradual transition. So a lot of um, processes like enzyme you know, transport of electrons yeah. takes place both classically and quantum mechanically. The way it was discovered was that they lowered the temperature of these biological molecules right down and they saw the classical transfer dying out right. because there's not enough yeah. energy to move these electrons from where A to B. But they were still doing it and it seemed like they were doing it through this process of quantum tunneling. So quantum mechanics doesn't seem to respect that temperature. It happens all the time. It's just been hidden away. And why is that? It was thought that the change occurred at much lower temperatures yeah. than biologically relevant ones. Okay. Uh, what we now seem to be seeing is that a little bit of temperature, which is down at the level of molecules, it's molecular vibrations, that's yeah. temperature. And it seems that you need a little bit of energy put in to actually urge these electrons to quantum like tunnel. A, like a chain reaction. It's like a chain reaction. So a lot of energy and, and the electrons can jump classically from one place to another. You, you lower the temperature, there's much less energy, and there's just enough to nudge them over quantum mechanically. Yeah. And, and so you have to do those very careful experiments with spectroscopy and so on, under careful laboratory conditions, to actually isolate the quantum from the classical. Yeah. But of course in nature, they're competing and happening all the time. Yeah. Where, where, when can you call something that, that works on a quantum level life? I mean, uh, I think that's also kind of the question that you're, you're coming to with, 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 with your uh, lecture today. I, I think one of the most exciting uh, developments, and this is still very early days, of course, you know, it may be that we find these quantum effects only play a very minor role, and that they don't really mean we have to rethink everything we know about molecular biology. But one of the big questions is, did quantum mechanics have a role, a, provide a helping hand to nature, to speed up that process of the emergence of life in the first place. Because that is still a big mystery. You know, that gradual change, evolution from organic, inanimate, non-living matter, yeah. still complicated molecules, to something that, that we can regard as the very first living thing, something that can replicate itself. Yeah. And that takes time. That, that's something that has to have happened by accident. Quantum mechanics may have had a helping hand in making that accidental process of developing from chemistry to biology may have made it happen much more quickly yeah. than, than it would have done without quantum mechanics. Yeah. So would you say that a lot of these kind of supernatural ideas actually use uh, quantum mechanics as, as a kind of excuse or a, a, a explanation? Yeah, I think this is one of the dangers of a field like quantum biology. Yeah. As soon as you, br you bring in some of these ideas of quantum mechanics, which are very weird, I mean, there's no getting around the fact that two particles, quantum entangled, communicating across a distance is very, very strange. Yeah. And it opens, the, the subject opens itself up to abuse yeah. by yeah. pseudoscience. Yeah. Because people have, you know, it's, it's a very attractive notion to say, oh, well, quantum mechanics therefore explains I know, homeopathy yeah. or, or, or explains telepathy. And of course, that's not what we're talking about. Quantum biology is, is still restricted inside living cells. It doesn't mean that I can read someone's mind because a particle in my brain is entangled with a particle in someone else's brain. That's just nonsense. And I think th there is that danger that we have to say, look, just because quantum mechanics may play a role in biology doesn't mean that suddenly you're opening up to all this other pseudo-scientific nonsense. And I certainly regard it as nonsense. Do you get many people like that who come up to you and, and try to Explanations for this. I, I do, and I get a lot of people saying, you know, I've got a new theory that explains this or that. I mean, I've had that for years, yeah, long before yeah. quantum biology. People yeah. say, oh, I've got a new theory that explains how Einstein was wrong, and I've proved it I'm with nothing, scientist. yeah, nothing yeah. more than high school maths, and, and here it is. And you look and you think, no, you've got all the words in there, but you haven't actually understood the basic science. And it's difficult to, to, to sort of let people down gently because they say, well, of course, Einstein wasn't believed when he came up with the theory of relativity. And, and in the kindest possible way, you have to say, yes, but that was a very rare occurrence. And he was Einstein. He was a genius. With all due respect, you're not Einstein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how do you say this without insulting people? But I think it's inevitable. People, the armchair scientists, think they've discovered something 
when it's actually well well trodden ground and we understand the explanation for it. Yeah. We have to try and get this across as diplomatically as possible. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you actually working on now, like currently? Well, I've, I've still got one foot in my main area of research, which is theoretical nuclear physics. Yeah. So understanding the structure of atomic nuclear. And, and that's the area that I've published most of my work in. I still have a PhD student working on that. But I've also got this other foot in this new area of quantum biology, and I've got a student looking at whether quantum tunneling might play a role in genetic mutations. All right. So this is a, a, an idea that has been around for half a century, yeah. but it's just been a theoretical, speculative idea. It's only now, what's, what's interesting is that now we can test it. Okay. We can test it in the laboratory and see if it holds water. It may not, but what's exciting is that that smallest hint that we're, we're looking at some new concept. Yeah. In fact, nature has hit upon quantum mechanics in a way that is completely unexpected. Yeah, and what would be the consequences of let's say, finding that out? It's, it's, it's so early to say what the consequences might be. Yeah. Uh, it, it may be, for instance, I mean, and this is a speculative example, if quantum tunneling plays a role in mutations of DNA, yeah. then does quantum mechanics play a role in all mutations, and how big a role is it? We know mutations take place for all sorts of reasons yeah. that are well understood. But if quantum mechanics does play a role, does it play a role, for instance, in the mutations that lead to cancer? So that's, that's a long way off in the future, yes. but it, it's such a huge thing.